Jonathan. Uh, welcome again. This is our agenda for today. We will uh, talk a little bit about uh, Vistara and give you an overview of the company. And then we'd like to spend the bulk of our time in a Q&A with Varma Kunaparaju, uh, Chief Technology Officer of Vistara, and really dive into the topic of the huge trend that we're seeing in IT today. About Vistara, Vistara is a enterprise SaaS solution that enables uh, enterprise and service providers to drive unified IT. We are built as a multi-tenant SaaS architecture uh, in a true SaaS model. We've been around for a uh, number of years with over 1,000 customers and 100 partners who are currently leveraging Vistar to manage their IT infrastructure. We have broad integration across a number of uh, cloud and platform technologies as, in addition to other point tools that manage IT operations management. We're headquartered in San Jose, California, uh, and have operations in both North America and Japan. What we think is most compelling about this star is that it is a single pane of glass. It provides uh, operations lifecycle management into any element of your uh, IT infrastructure across your physical, virtual, and cloud, uh, across your application. It really is a tool that gives you the, the visibility into anything that you have. When we talk about IT lifecycle management, it is not only the day one, but what happens when you have uh, any, uh, any element in your infrastructure from day two to end of life, where you have to have uh, monitoring and asset management capabilities uh, able to control from you know, remote access or uh, managing that infrastructure, all of the patch and uh, antivirus automation components as well as being able to report and uh, plan and so you're optimizing everything you have in your infrastructure. And finally, Vistara allows you to present uh, your infrastructure in a business relevant way by, by being able to express uh, your operations aligned to business goals, uh, meet SLAs, do it in a compliant way, uh, and also with security and scalability. So without much ado, I'd like to introduce Varma. And Varma Kunapraju is the star's chief technology officer and co-founder. He has over 20 years of experience in driving product and engineering in the enterprise software space. Uh, prior to the star, he also co-founded NetEnrich, which is a pure play provider of automation-enabled IT services. And Varmo is also co-founder and vice president of product development at NextPrez, which was their cloud-based content management and process automation system. Through all these experiences, Varma has had great visibility into enterprise IT and the transformation that CIOs have been driving to uh, over the past years and is a real visionary in the enterprise IT arena. So uh, without uh, further ado, I'd like to jump into the the Q&A, Varma. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to be on the call uh, today. Uh, happy to kind of uh, dive into um, the any the vision behind this data and where uh, where the IT in our view is heading from a federation uh, of uh, infrastructure and, and service providers. So let's let's begin with you know, how did how did Vistara start? Um, so um, unlike um, you know um, the technology companies that you see in Silicon Valley and and particularly the operations technologies that come out, we uh, we started Vistara with a fundamental need that we have seen while we are addressing mid enterprise and larger enterprise customers in, in, in IT operations management. Um, and, and the need for Vistara came from a fundamental uh, uh, service provider and what a service provider needs to do from uh, infrastructure management in this new 
is a new modern IT where infrastructure is getting um, federated. And, and, and the two fundamental shifts uh, that we see in the media enterprises that forced Vistara to build the SaaS technology are one, the infrastructure elements that traditionally used to be on premise in an enterprise are now getting federated from on premise to private cloud to public cloud. That's one fundamental tectonic shift that we see in the infrastructure IT management space. The second shift that we have seen is the, the need for uh, IT resources to manage in this new complex modern IT world may or may not exist in the enterprise completely in house. And those two fundamental technology uh, shifts really called for a new age modern IT operations management, and that's how we start a started. Great. And so those two those two shifts we talked about the infrastructure coming from everywhere and the leverage of external IT resources. Uh, let's let's focus on the infrastructure piece first. What is the impact of the shift in sourcing IT infrastructure for an IT operations management professional? Um, we see that to come in um, two, two things. One is the, the infrastructure elements um, are uh, more and more, you know, going to private and public cloud. That's uh, the, the agility with which the infrastructure elements are getting provisioned, the agility with which the infrastructure elements are uh, given to the business users is making the internal IT teams to react in a nimble and an agile way uh, to meet the challenges that the business users are asking them to do. And uh, what that really means is uh, leveraging external IT resources. You know, uh, more and more IT in the enterprise is becoming a service provider, you know, an enterprise IT, what used to be 10 years ago, uh, where someone asks for an IT request and that gets fulfilled, you know, um, you know, with the procurement and with uh, 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 finance playing a role into to kind of ordering the equipment, provisioning in the data center and making it, making it available, now is becoming more and more uh, uh, an agile and nimble way, and, the, and as a result, the enterprise uh, IT teams are leveraging external IT resources and more and more becoming a service provider of assembling those IT resources wherever they are coming from and making that available to internal business users. That's the big shift that we are seeing across, um, you know, mid and a larger enterprise IT organizations in the enterprise. Okay. Can you lay out the benefits of a, a SaaS architecture for this kind of, of new environment where you need more agility, where these uh, resources are coming from different places? Yeah. Um, so if you look at this uh, new uh, IT environment where the resources are getting federated and the resources are getting ordered and consumed, the existing uh, enterprise IT management tools are breaking. Gone are the days where you buy a, a $4 million license uh, of a large enterprise IT infrastructure and uh, management tool, and then you, you basically put that management tool in place, and then you, know, um, then you don't um, maintain or manage the tool because the, those elements are sitting in the enterprise kind of a thing. Um, now, with the IT being federated and the tools um, that need to manage those environments uh, needs to touch not only what exists in the four walls of the enterprise, but also needs to touch on the private and public clouds. So uh, the need for uh, this uh, SaaS architecture is fundamental in this new IT, uh, modern IT, because the old tools um, the agility that is needed for those old tools to provision on the new elements does not exist, and uh, no one else uh, can improve and touch the deployment because you know the the uh, the, the the need for the agility calls for um, the, the the tool to um, discover the new assets wherever they are provisioned, 
bring it to under management and 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 provide a single uh, single pane of glass for the entire IT. You know, maybe there are um, IT elements that are only a, a database administrator needs to see, and there are elements that a network administrator needs to see, and there are elements that an OS administrator needs to see. And wherever they are, they need to be provided in a single pane of glass, and that really calls for a SaaS architecture to. Uh, touch all the elements because those old enterprise on-premise tools cannot touch these newly provisioned uh, public and private clouds in a single pane of glass. Right. So you mentioned uh, several kinds of people who might have to access the single pane of glass. How do you envision the shift of, uh, on the resource side, the shift to leverage more of these external IT resources, whether they're, you know, OEMs or service providers, what does that look like? Yeah, um, so the 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 shift in this uh, this uh, IT element also calls for changes in the talent that is managing this IT. Right, sometimes what um, the these new elements that are getting provisioned in the environment, uh, the the talent that is needed to manage those IT elements may or may not exist. Uh, completely within the within the corporate IT, and and some of that IT talent may come from the original equipment manufacturers. You know, the, the manufacturers who are providing these private clouds, or the manufacturers who are providing these higher end network equipment. The 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 equipment manufacturer may have to come and provide some services. You know, the OEMs like Cisco's, the EMCs, the the NetApps, the world potentially may come and play a certain piece of the puzzle. And then at the same time, the uh, the outsourcing, you know, that used to happen in the larger enterprises, those outsourcing partners are traditionally used to be, you know, external resources. But in the mid-enterprise, outsourcing does not, does not work completely because, you know, you need to have corporate IT, you need to manage that IT in-house, and there are maybe uh, on identified need, there may be elements of external resources that may come and do, and you call it co-sourcing. So in this new era, the IT and the service providers, sometimes the resellers, the system integrators may come and play to manage these IT resources. So in this new era, the resources that are needed um, for doing this enterprise IT management um, may come from various places, and that really calls for the ability to provide a technology platform and, and the ability to kind of really bring these resources in a compliant way uh, where they, they get to see what they need to see, what actual work that they need to do is the only work that, that these external resources needs to kind of come and, and do, and, 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 and that needs to be controlled by corporate IT. And, and that really calls for um, a new way of looking at things. It's not only a federation of IT infrastructure elements, but also the resources that are managing the IT and bringing them on need basis to do what needs to be done has to come into, into play in a, in a single operations framework. Yeah, that's, yeah, that co-sourcing concept is really interesting. Uh, and it ties very much to what we talk about IT as a service provider in modern IT, right? So modern IT is the paradigm shift of IT delivering shared IT operations and service management as a service to multiple lines of business in an enterprise. Can you show us, you know, what does that look like? And what are the things that an organization has to, to deliver in this, in this kind of uh, paradigm? Yeah, um, you know, there are a couple of things, right? You know, while I kind of show some of the elements that you, you could see in this, right? If IT and enterprise IT is not nimble, what business users are really doing right now is they're using their credit cards and they're using all kinds of uh, means to um, consume this infrastructure as a service that is coming from these public cloud providers. And that is going to pose a problem because now you have enterprise IT controlling certain portions of the data center certain portions of the private clouds, certain portions of infrastructure elements that they procured. And if they're not nimble enough, this new modern IT 
the business users are going and sourcing various elements from various places, and that is causing a, a big shadow IT problem. So if you don't have, uh, if you, and in, in, if the enterprise IT does not take control of these resources that are getting provisioned by business users or provisioned by the Dev DevOps engineering resources and don't have the visibility, the overall um, visibility, the overall operations control, overall cost controls that needs to be done um, are completely uh, not in the control of the, the corporate IT. So what is critical in this new modern IT is to make sure even if the resources are getting are coming from various places, making sure that they come under a single plane of class and, and being able to provide visibility, you know, and automatically discover, you know, if uh, there is a, if the CFO gave a, a corporate uh, mandate to kind of go and use infrastructure as a service so that it will become a utility, being able to bring those resources and bring and automatically discover those resources, bring those resources under a single pane of glass and organize those resources under each business unit or application or a service unit and bring them under a, a, a role and rule-based access so that one single uh, operations framework is controlling all these resources that are getting federated is, is a critical piece of this modern IT. And, and, and if you look at um, you know, um, the, the technology that brings that in, in the form of uh, the, 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 these IT resources and bring them under operations life cycle management, right? Where these resources are getting completely patched, completely managed, uh, monitored, uh, automated to kind of make sure all the business process automations to make those resources are, uh, are, are uh, optimized for uh, both administration and management as well as um, the visibility that the business units needs to get, um, if that is not provided, the, the, the resources will become, you know, um, islands of or pockets of, uh, uh, pockets of uh, isolation and no single control exists across all, these, all this entire environment. That is what we mean by a single pane of glass for bringing full IT operations life cycle management under the Vistara platform. Aki, you know, it may be very beneficial if we, if we show what that I, and what Vistara is trying to kind of bring in that single operations lifecycle management, and that is the need for the SaaS platform that, that Vistara is bringing to the market. Okay. So perfect segue. Uh, we spend a lot of time as Vistara thinking about you know, what this optimal single pane of glass to meet these needs are. Uh, so, Barma, let's, let's walk through what, uh, you know, what this looks like and what you're able to do here. Yeah. So, um, if you look at this, right, you know, uh, uh, what, what uh, uh, the enterprises that we spoke to, and we have spoken to very large enterprises and mid-enterprises who are consuming these resources, and they wanted their IT organizations to look as if they are service providers. So they organize their end consumers of this internal IT infrastructure elements into business units, like the pull-down menu that you're showing there, you know, where each of those business units is organized as, as if it is an end customer. So I can go and pull down finance organization and look at the dashboard of all the applications, the services, the infrastructure elements that the finance unit of my enterprise is looking at or I could go look at a marketing uh, organization and look at all the resources. Maybe they are running a big promo, and that promo really calls for certain workloads to be federated into a public cloud, and being able to bring that dashboard of that marketing business unit um, resources organized in a dashboard and looking at the alerts and events um, and various things that are coming from various uh, federated infrastructure elements in a single dashboard is what the the, the dashboard view here looks um, and, and shows to the enterprise IT. Now, we can also dive deeper into 
any of the infrastructure elements. Yeah. So as you can see here, you know, in this particular case, I'm looking at a business unit, and, and the business unit is consuming resources, not only in on-premise and private clouds, they're consuming public cloud resources, and all of them are presented in a single unified pane. And by the way, you know, this is visible to me because I have access to all these resources. If, uh, you know, a, a role-based access prevented me to see only um, certain portions of this infrastructure, wherever that is coming from, I will only see those portions of the infrastructure that I have access to. And as you can see, these infrastructure elements can be browsed using um, yeah, uh, the element type. You know, in this particular case, you know, I am touching a, a, an Exchange server, so an Exchange dashboard is shown, and it could be running in a private cloud, you know. And on the other hand, if I touch another web server, I may be touching a public cloud web server that is running in an infrastructure as a service from Amazon or Azure or Google, and that is shown in in a single infrastructure view. So the infrastructure elements, going back to the main theme, are, are completely federated. I, as an IT enterprise IT guy, I am looking at what I need to see in, in uh, one unified operations framework in the, in the screen that, that is getting presented here. Now, what about the, the resources side? So if we needed to create an incident and share it with an external service provider, now let's let's walk through what uh, putting in that that service request would look like. Um, great question. So if you look at you know let's say you know this is a, a an element of uh, uh, element under management that I'm doing for uh, you know my marketing group and you know all of a sudden it is running a big data you know whether it is a Cassandra whether it is a Hadoop or whether it is a, a Mongo very large. Uh, data that is getting managed under 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 uh, under this element, and I don't have the talent in house, but my service provider partner, you know, or my system integrator partner, which could be a large reseller system integration partner in the in the locality where I am running this, or you know, it could be a, a specialized consulting group which only specializes on this big data. I wanted that person to come and do my clustered um, Cassandra to be expanded because my, my big data needs increased. So I could go into this platform, create a service request, pose a service request, and send that service request to the specialist of my need um, that I don't have as an in-house talent and send that uh, that uh, that incident or that uh, that service request to an external service provider and make this service provider to come into the environment, do the work that they need to do uh, in a given time window. I can control. You know, I wanted this big data consultant to come on a Friday night nine o'clock and do the maintenance work that needs to be done until two o'clock on Saturday morning, and that is the only time window that I wanted this service provider to come and do the job for me. And if he comes before 9 o'clock, I wanted to prevent him. And if he comes after 2 o'clock, I cannot give access to him. By the way, since the service provider is coming into a big data that I'm hosting and I'm compli I'm compliance driven organization, I have SOX compliance and I have HIPAA compliance that I need to kind of do, um, and that, that really calls for the service provider's work to be completely audited, and that is my one of my requirements as a mid enterprise. So whatever this service provider did, I wanted to have a complete recording of what he did. So providing a platform where the enterprise IT can source this work in a co-sourcing manner, not necessarily completely outsourcing my big data database, but I am holding the big data and big data management, but on need basis, being able to create a service request, send this request to a service provider, make that work completely audited and recorded is what the, the, the federation of IT service requests to a service provider that is shown in this, in this plane 
um, in, the, in the screen that, that, uh, that you're presenting here. So, you know, we can see a, a remote center, a managed service provider, an OEM who might directly support this, this issue, but it also says marketplace. You know, let's, let's talk a little bit about what we think the future looks like in, in how we manage IT resources. Uh, that's a great point. So, you know, it is up to our, our, uh, our vision is enterprise IT is going to completely control not only the, where the elements are getting federated, but also the resources that are participating. So today they may be uh, looking at, you know, the established relationships that they have, but where our vision is at some point there will be marketplace of providers in this new federated world and the enterprise IT at their disposal may put a service request to a marketplace and make uh, an external provider to come qualify based on rating, ranking, qualify the, that, that provider and, and make that work executed using uh, an auditable, compliant, recorded manner into the platform. And one thing that I wanted to kind of mention, uh, though this, uh, may or may not be uh, that critical in a small, smaller uh, businesses environment. Mid enterprises really need compliance and understanding what an external service provider, particularly if it is coming from a visionary marketplace kind of a thing, that needs to be audited and recorded. So that way I know what exactly the, the individual did in my environment. Okay. So bringing this all together, what is the STARS vision? Um, our vision is mid-enterprise IT has to become a service provider and, and is becoming a service provider. If they don't become a service provider, um, the shadow IT, the business groups going and provisioning and doing whatever they need to do will keep on happening. So whether we like it or not, Mid-enterprise IT is transforming very, very rapidly to become a service provider. And our vision is we wanted to enable the ability to make that IT to really become a service provider. So um, just to kind of from a, a vision perspective or from a practicality perspective, wouldn't it be nice if an IT manager sits in front of a CFO uh, where you know he goes with a business report that gets generated from um, a, a technology and an operations platform um, that shows Mr. CFO, look for the marketing group. Here are the resources that they are consuming. Here is the amount of talent from my IT group that is getting consumed for this business unit. I want you to know that you know. So today, when when uh, when when enterprise IT is seen, they are seen in a, in a mid enterprise um, as a help desk and IT when they, when there is an IT problem. Wouldn't it be nice if IT now become you know a service provider where they go and sit in front of each of these business groups, presenting with a PowerPoint that shows the resources that are consumed, the amount of effort that the IT team is putting for the business unit, number of incidents, number of hours of talent that has, uh, that got resulted because of the outages, um, you know, alerts that got processed, incidents that are, uh, that are taking place in that particular business group, and the amount of resources that got consumed from the business group, uh, you know, to maintain their infrastructure and IT, is the kind of uh, uh, enablement that we see mid-enterprise IT organizations are getting transformed to. And, and that is super critical in, in this federation of uh, infrastructure elements and the IT being modernized. So from our vision perspective, we see the infrastructure elements being federated, the resources that are getting federated, the, the, infra the infrastructure IT teams in the enterprise are more uh, uh, orchestrators and service providers uh, to enable these things to come together and, 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 and stitch them together and, and make that look like modern, agile, nimble, 
um, and being able to react to the to the business group's demands. That's what we wanted. We see our vision to be. We wanted to transform the the enterprise IT organizations not to be seen as a help desk, IT uh, support people when things are broken, as opposed to uh, a, a visionary in in terms of giving those business those business relevance to those uh, those business groups. Thank you. Barbara, we have a few questions that have come in through the chat. And so we'll, uh, and if you have any more, please do post them. Uh, we'll be looking at them as, as we ask one of the questions now. So the first, if I already have an ITSM solution in place, can I use it together with Vistara? Oh, absolutely. Great question. So Vistara has um, two-way adopters to popular ITSM tools in the in the market, and uh, we we do a two-way integration with the existing ITSM tools. So one, an enterprise doesn't need to completely replace the ITSM tool. They can continue to leverage their internal ITSM tool for ticketing and incident management that takes place within the corporate four walls of the IT. And when that incident needs to be put into a federated external service provider, Vistara will transport that in incoming request upon an approval to post it to an external service provider so that the external service provider can continue to work on that request through Vistara. And when he completes that incident and closes that incident or closes that service request, the internal ITSM can uh, uh, gets integrated to a point where that same incident gets closed inside. So we have two-way integrations with the existing enterprise popular ITSM tools. So another question along the lines of, of, of routing work to uh, specific expertise. Uh, how can I arrange for alerts to automatically routed to a particular administrator based on their skill set and their work schedule? Yeah, so um, the alert processing and incident management system in, inside the Stara can be configured in, to to make you know uh, all the alerts and events of this type that they come, they should automatically uh, get ticketed. So sometimes enterprises don't want to do that; they wanted to process using an L1, um, uh, level one, or a level two oriented knock to kind of make sure that those incidents are controlled before they go to an external service provider. So they process those events and alerts, and upon processing of those events and alerts, they can send it to an external service provider through a workflow. Um, there are, um, there are uh, resources in the market, both uh, Vistara is partnered with uh, service providers in various geographies to do those level one, level two oriented work, and some of those level one, level two work uh, from these service providers um, gets delivered in a shared delivery model from a large um, a large service providers like NetEnrich kind of a people where they do level one, level two processing to kind of uh, uh, do these alert and events. And then uh, upon those, uh, in, when those incidents become really external sourced, uh, externally sourced talent is needed, they can go through a workflow to send it to an external service provider. And this data provides a platform for converting an alert instant problem and change to a workflow to send it to an external, port, external, pro, external provider. Great. So our last question, and this is around uh, multi-cloud or multiple kinds of clouds. How can I monitor a, a service, a hybrid service that uses elements on both my private and public clouds? Um, you know, the Vistana has best practices uh, monitoring templates in the platform. Um, you know, it has it is obviously much more than a monitoring tool. It has complete lifecycle management built into the platform. But both private and public cloud instances appear as if they are local devices in Vistara. One could drag and drop the monitoring templates on those devices, and those templates are applied, and those alerts and events coming from those uh, those private and public clouds are shown in a single alert, alert management, event management framework 
that Vistara provides. Yeah. And I think we can add that you would be mapping the, the dependencies in your service with any element, whether they are public or private cloud or on-premise or, or any other uh, yeah. component of your infrastructure. Yeah. That's a good point. You know, basically, um, there are two ways to look at the infrastructure. One way to look at it at the element level, the other way to look at it as a service level. And, and when you create service dashboards in Vistara, you will be browsing the service and those elements that are supporting the service can be coming from wherever and the monitoring and, and even processing can take place at the service level and the visibility is provided at the service level. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Varma. And thank you everyone who joined our webinar today. Uh, we hope you learned something about where we think the Federation of IT uh, infrastructure and resources is going and uh, how that impacts your business and how the star might be able to help.